Good evening, everybody. Nice spring evening in Pittsburgh, PA. Had all the doors open on the barn. Painted a couple of my wagon wheels that lean up against the fence. I think I even might have gotten a suntan. All right, uh, we're going to just do a quick offshoot here to start off with. We had a lot of people uh, requesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, a lot of questions are just kind of some simple scanning techniques. So I'm going to just kind of show how I go through my approach. As you can see, this is the uh, portfolio. And those are mostly the stocks that we've recommended recently. Recently, Right now there's 42 of them in this list. I usually have it go up by the time you recommend two or three a day or three or four a day and put them up here. Every few days I'll go and I'll clean out the ones that didn't work and come back and find uh, narrow it down to the ones that were still in or uh, that are still working. But there's a couple of different scans that I use. Now, you're looking at TC 2000, I think it's 2007. They've got much more updated stuff, but and a lot of this you don't even have to do. It's already built in. Where is that list located? That list is what I have. Uh, oh. It's not really listed anywhere other than on here, so I can see, check real quick on each each one of them. So that list is pretty much, if you just look at the uh, recommendations that we've done, um, usually two or three, the ones that have executed are usually the ones that are sitting on this, this list. So... Here's what I do to set up my scans. First of all, my trading universe is this one, the trading universe. And the way I set up my scans is I put in here my criteria, which is stocks that are trading greater than five and have an average volume of 200,000 shares a day. And uh, so as you can see, we took the count of 8,700 things that are on the on the whole uh, universe. With stocks greater than five, we knocked it down to 7,600. And with stocks that trade more than 2,000 share or 200,000 shares a day, knock it down to about 3,000 stocks. So that's my number one scan. And I'll go back here in a second and show you why those different scans. The more optimal scan is oops, where'd it go? Where's it go? Okay. stocks oversold which is this one right here and the only difference on this criteria is that it's got the stocks rated than five two hundred thousand shares a day and the stochastics that are below 20. So that knocked that list from 3,000 down to 400. So if this market was bobbing up and down and we saw the market kind of trading uh, flat, this would be the one I would go with. And then what I do is I come up here and I can sort by whatever I want. And in this case, I have sorted by which stocks have had the biggest percent move today. So essentially what I'm looking at are stocks that are in the oversold condition that had a big percent move. Now, I can look at this one real quick. I think I've already got this one written down. And I can say, all right, this one looks uh, pretty good. So I come over here and I can click on it or I can hit F and flag it. So I can go down. Uh, like this, here's another Hawaiian Air. What's that signal? That's our best friend. So I'm 
usually when I'm scanning, I'm only going at about this much time, maybe three or four seconds per uh, per chart. Now, once I've gone down through a few of the ones in the oversold area and they start getting a little bit diminished, I'll come up here and I'll just take this and take all my ones that I've just flagged and move it over to my, what I call my bucket watch list, which is watch list six. And as you can see on watch list six, yeah, maybe you can't see. My watch list six, I've been collecting some over the last three, four, five, six trading days. So I've got 84 stocks in that area or in that bucket list. But this is part of why we do the, the first thing we do before we do our scans is we take a look and see what the market in general is doing. So, so if I go to my portfolio, which uh, Oh, what's happening? Oh, the wrong thing. If I go to my portfolio, the first analysis that I make every day is which way do we think the market is going? Well, right now, we can pretty well see the NASDAQ is basically going sideways. The S&P 500 is basically going sideways. The Dow is going basically sideways. The only one that showed some strength today was the transportation index, wherever it may have gone. There it is. It showed bounce up off the T-line. So that's got to be my first analysis, is what is this, uh, what is the market doing? Well, it's not selling off. It's not really going up. So I know that right now, I want to still be looking for long positions, and I also will probably have a few short positions to look at. So I've already set up my scans, which are whatever uh, index you're doing. Oh, Jim, I don't know why you're even... Uh, I don't even know why uh, it could be setting up for a blue ice failure. I mean, we haven't done anything to even get to the 50 yet. So anyways, um, now I forgot what I was saying. So if I think I'm pretty much heading in a bullish direction, this is why, and notice what the, uh, uh, what the overall market is doing. Where did I? All right, if we look at the market in general, probably looking for stocks that are in the oversold condition isn't our best cri criteria because we've had a big steady uptrend in this market with some pullback. So what we're looking for is more upside. And with the market up in a steady move like this, more than likely, if you're looking at stocks that are in the oversold area and starting back up, they haven't been participating very well. So they're probably not your strongest uh, uh, movers. So I go back to my general list, my 3,000 stocks, and I, uh, again, sort it by the biggest percent move today. And that's where I'll start my... Uh, uh, scanning because I'm looking for stocks that are probably not in an oversold condition but are already having some sort of uptrend and bouncing up. So a lot of these aren't, you know, thine is. So that's, that's how I kind of narrow down which ones I'm looking for. Now, 
as you can see, or as I saw when we were when I went through this earlier, is there isn't a whole heck of a lot right here that tells us there's any general uh, movement of any. I mean, there's just lots of stocks that are either popping big or uh, just kind of moving sideways. So things like Bizon, I might put on my watch list because it broke because it broke out of this wedge formation. And CYCC, this one's got exactly the uh, the movement that we're anticipating, where you had a big breakout, a pullback, and then a bullish engulfing signal here on the T line. So that one's been flagged. Now to take it one step further. I have all sorts of scans or uh, markets to look at. I've got the Morningstar industry, industry groups, which is the same criteria, that has the same looking charts as Joe, this telling me which sectors are moving the best. So look what we had today in the trend, or the trucking stocks. We had a lot of uh, Morningstar powerful movement. So with that, I can go up here, click on this, and say change to my, I think it's my sub-industry groups, which brings in a lot of the stocks that make up that industry. And so I can start like this. Look at Swift uh, Trucking. Big move. Maybe too big to try to chase after. So I can start going down through this sector to see which stocks look pretty good. can't tell whether that's a, it's almost a kicker signal, not quite. Uh, Werner, Werner Enterprises, that could be, doesn't look like the percentage move. So I can pick out which stocks in that sector that I want to go after. Now, if I go through and I don't see anything real tempting, then I just go back up to my uh, Morningstar group. Say, all right, what's the next sector? Well, that's toys and hobby stores. Don't know why they would be moving, but I don't have to analyze why they would be moving. I'm now looking at the stocks in that sector, but I'm still looking for the same criteria. These on we just looked at. It meets all the criteria what I'm looking for. Stocks greater than five and trading more than 200,000. Whereas some of these, you can see, even though they were up pretty big, this one only traded 31,000 shares. So that's not going to fit into my my trading uh, style or my trading parameters. So I can go through and find the best looking stocks. That one had a uh, best friend. This one volume is too low, so I leave it alone. Barnes and Noble, ah. Eh. So I can do that. Once I have clicked on a few of those, I take those and I flag them and move them over to my uh, watch list six to come back and look at them later. All right. I can go back and see which charts look the next best. Grocery stores. And it's already had its move. I'm looking for something that's just started a good move. That that's transportation and shipping also. Oil and gas drilling is picking up. So I can narrow down which sectors I can be uh, looking at. Oh, so, M. T, I don't know whether that is relevant for, uh, I don't know, if you're scanning off of those charts, I guess you could do it. I'm sure there must be a way. I just don't use it over there. I can, because I already use TCNet. So anyways, that's uh, pretty much now. What happens is, if I've gone through this process, which this process takes all of maybe five or ten minutes, because I, I, my eyes will be attracted to the ones that are the good looking uh, signals. I go back to my uh, watch list six and I can start going down through these 
and figure out which stocks are the best that I'll look at again. I know I don't want to look at 84 stocks or 86 stocks, but I do want to look at the ones that have new pattern uh, relevance. That one's already passed, so even though it was up a good percentage today, um, if you're in it, you just stay long. This one needs a little bit more. So I can go down through and I'll look at Hawaiian Airlines and see if it's going to break out through the 50. Eames getting ready. So once I've done that, uh, cons we already own because of the kicker signal. EZPW, I'll flag this one because of the best friend, and now we're right on the 50. And that's how I kind of set up which ones I want to narrow down to look at. There's uh, FTK, look at the little bobble breakout. I'll, I'll flag that one. So once I've done that, I want to move, let's see, I'll do a few more just to make it interesting. Uh, let's just say for this one, for example, a little scoop pattern, if it breaks out, HDP is already up there. MDCO looks good, I'll look at that one again. So once I've gone through and found all the ones that look interesting, Usually that'll be within the first, as we're seeing, first 20 or 30. Um, I'll come up here, and I'll just copy the flagged ones now up to watch list five. So now on my, my watch list five, in this case we have eight of them. So I unflag them, and I do the same process. I'll go back down through and start analyzing these a little bit more, with a little bit more scrutiny. Um, so out of these eight, maybe I pick three or four, and those become the ones I, I set up for the next day. Now, I, if I don't click on one, doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a good chart. Let's just say, let's say I picked out these three as the, uh, uh, the picks for the next day. But the next day, this one, which we're anticipating opening higher and doing a J-hook bobble breakout, let's say it opens down here. Well, that all of a sudden becomes one that I'm not going to trade. It's not doing what it's supposed to. And let's say only one of these two work. Well, I still have four or five more that I can go back to and say, well, this one was setting up. Now it's trading up here. And I can be buying this one. So just because I didn't pick them doesn't mean they still don't become uh, possibilities based upon how they open the next day. Okay, so that was just a quick scanning uh, rundown. So with that, if there's any questions, this will be the time to ask. I will close down the uh, charts and move the other charts over. think. Well. Ah, that's not true. Well, now I move those 10 up to watch list 4. I'll do the same process. I'll go through those 10 and say, all right, which ones out of these this, these 10 look good? And I might go through and find 6 that still look great. I move those up to watch list 3. Um, um, so, what did I say, 6? Now let's say I go through those six, and uh, I find three that look good. I'll move those up to watch list two. So depending on how many good ones that I um, 
Yeah, so at the end of the day, my watch list um, Oops, let's see what we got here. Uh, Rick, I'll check on Roger. I don't know. I'll do that tomorrow. Would you go back and explain why you look for the oversold stocks and then look for the big percent movies? Well, if you're in a uh, oversold condition and then all of a sudden you see a big price move uh, out of the oversold condition, um, that's, yeah, that's usually not necessarily because of the price move, but now we can look at stocks to see if there's been a doji gap up. We can see that big, what that big price move produced if it produced a uh, signal. You clean out all your watch lists at the end of the day and start with an empty set the next day. Yes. Not watch list six. That one's still my bucket uh, list. But at the end of the day or starting the next day, I will clean out one through five, and then I'll start the process all over again. If I've got 86 stocks in, the, uh, in my watch list six, more than likely all 86, if they've been sitting in there for two, three, four days, are now not relevant anymore. Whoops, did I up the charts yet? Oh. Um, so maybe at the every four or five days, I'll go back through the uh, through uh, watch list six, and I'll just go down through there and click on the ones that still look good, move those up to watch list five. Come back and clean out watch list six, empty it, and then move all the stocks that I've moved up to watch list five back to watch list six again, and that starts my my new bucket. Then I go through the process again. I start looking to see which charts look the best. Okay, so once we've done that, uh, been giving some feedback that we look at way too many stocks and people can't keep up. So what I've done is I've come back the number of stocks and then at the end of the day or at the end of our sessions, I'll see if I can figure out which ones I can look at real quick and go back at the end and say, all right, these look like the top five that I'd be looking at uh, for tomorrow. If two stocks have good charts and only one is over, sold would you prefer trading the oversold one not necessarily i want to see what the other parameters are telling me what was my signal my reversal signal obviously if i've got one that's in the oversold area and doing a bullish engulfing signal and another one that gapped up from a doji doing our best friend i'm probably going to go with the best friend signal because it's a little bit more powerful so and i might see one that's doing a buy signal right smack dab off the 50-day moving average, another one that may have had a signal and a gap up through the T-line. So I've got to take all that into an account or into an account which ones that I would prefer as far as if two look good, which, ones, which one looks better. Um, So stocks like that uh, 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 may be oversold, but I need to see some. Yeah, you got to see why they'd be buying. I mean, we're not we're bu not buying stocks just because they're in an oversold condition. We're looking for stocks in an oversold condition that have uh, illustrated a big buy signal. When people keep asking to see the same stock every day. That doesn't match our strategy. Do you think they are trying to tout their stock for their own gain after they're in it? Oh, Jason. No, I think what happens most of the time is you bought the stock. This is the old 
old-fashioned way of investing. You bought the stock because you thought it was moving up. It dwindles. And then you keep looking for somebody to tell you that it's time to buy because you own it and you want it to go back up. And so that's why when I look at something like this, I say, all right, no, you don't want to be owning this. Now go back and find out where would I be out of this. If I was in it because I was thinking it was moving in this direction, where was the spot that I should have been out? So I probably should bring that more. And I know there's some people that keep looking at a stock to see whether it's uh, whether it's turned around versus saying, all right, you shouldn't be in this one. You should have been out here. You can get back in when you see the next buy signal. Is that right? 7.30? Okay. I just happened to pick this one out because I know it's been drifting. Okay, so let's take a gander here. The market itself, this is where our first step is. Which way is the market going? Right now it's sideways except our stochastics are heading up. We're still trading right along the T-line, and there hasn't been any real strong buying, obviously, and there hasn't been any real strong selling. So what's that mean to us? Well, that means a lot of our bullish charts are acting, or that we can identify by scanning, um, Uh, Jamie, you can, you're scanning for patterns shouldn't be something that you necessarily want to be scanning for specifically, or I don't. If I see something setting up, it may stay on my watch list for two, three weeks or whatever times for that pattern to develop if I can see the pattern developing. Uh, so it doesn't really have to be something you scan for because there's too many variables. I'm trying to think of one. I'll try to yeah, try to explain because a lot of times if you're following a stock, you're getting ready for the next uh, pattern because of the patterns that we recognize. So you don't really have to scan for them. They're, they're already there that you've looked for a while back. I see Pepsi. Well, uh, your stochastics are lower because relative to where it is right now, it, it's, remember the stochastics are a uh, function of where it opens and closes during the day. So right now it's showing weakness even though the price isn't moving. Uh, Uh, the price isn't moving very uh, are back very much. So you're going to have situations where a mild pullback, the stochastics will pull back. Okay, so the uh, when I look at the uh, Dow, I see that there really isn't any selling. There really isn't any buying. So uh, again, when I do the uh, Analysis of the trend, the market trend in general, which way is it going? Well, right now it's kind of moving sideways. This is the NASDAQ. Lots of indecision. So is there anything that would I could put anything bullish or bearish on? Well, look at what the uh, transportation index did today. They're buying the transports. So that tells me, all right, they're still buying sectors in this market and they're not selling others. That tells me the trend is still uh, relatively, or not bullish, but they aren't selling it off right now. And so if I know they're not selling it off, I know the patterns that I'd be looking at are still working, are going to work much more effectively. Now, obviously, a fry pan bottom breakout is not going to work as effectively if the market is selling off 140 points each day. So. Uh, If the market is just trading flat, I know 
the patterns that I know have uh, good potential are still going to work pretty well because there's not a major change of investor sentiment. Let me take a look at uh, for the people that are trading some of the uh, futures. We're still staying short in the uh, in soybeans. However, whoops, what happened? Oh, Shaw, something's going on here. What's happening? Oh, God. I'm just not able to hit my butt with either hand tonight. What is, yeah. So we're still not up above the T-line. We're in the oversold area, and we're trading flat. So we've got our protective stop right up here at 947. Um, we had it the last couple of days that if it, clo if it closed above 947, we want to be out. Now if it keeps moving up, what's this telling us right here? There's some buying going on down here, so I don't want to see it move in this direction. So we've got our good till cancel stop right back up here at the T-line at around 947. Uh, Lou, I look at them, but I don't use them extensively for one major reason. I don't want to influence other people on what they're learning with candlesticks as far as what they should be using or not be using. So that's why we have other people come on, because the number one criteria that I use are the candlestick signals. Now, if you're using uh, financial, you want to use it as your, I guess, your un trading universe, and then use the candlestick charts to make your own decisions of whether what you're looking at is actually working out. Or if you're using Chuck Hughes or Hubert, you overlay candlesticks on what they're doing or recommending. It's going to make it much more clear as to what's, what's happening uh, as far as your trading situation or making your trading decisions. We can see what's happening in crude oil. Pretty much looks like a scoop pattern setting up. Now, it's getting up here pretty uh, pretty quickly right to the handle. So we want to watch to see what it does at that level. Gold hasn't done us any real big movement over the last uh, two weeks now. I mean, it hit the 200 and came right back down, but you can see which way it's going sideways. So what was I looking at? I can't remember. The dollar is just kind of in this downtrend. So here's a case where we get the advantage of seeing what's happening at important technical levels. We're right about at the top of this trend channel and saw a bearish Parame today. So it might be heading back down to the bottom of this uh, pattern. Oh, okay. Well, that was it. Uh, lean hogs. I looked at them earlier. They weren't really moving all that much. They're still in a downtrend. But live cattle. You can see it's in an upward trend coming off buy signals. Where's your next target? You could probably draw a line across the top here. Okay, so we're going to kind of cut down on the number of charts we're going to look at, but there's still a few that are acting well in the portfolio. Obviously, NVGS is still in this kind of fry pan bottom uh, pattern, staying above the T line, and Terra. Kind of the same scenario, up in this upward trend channel, looking for the next target to be right along the tops of this. Uh, so looking for it to move somewhere up into this range. Amazon, lots of, of call spreads on this one. 
You can see what it did today. This is why you want to know what your signals and your patterns uh, tell you. Look at where they opened this one today, right at where it opened on Friday and went down, gapped up and went in the opposite direction. Kicker type signal tells us we have more upside. If we have more upside, what type of pattern is it uh, uh, showing us? J hook pattern. What was the one before Kara? Oh man, NVGS. Uh, we recommended PA. As you can see, the rounding bottom. Then right here at the important. So a lot of people say, well, how far back do you look? I look far enough back. I mean, I can. I'm, this is the important area. I'm seeing whether this is the time to be buying. Then I can start looking back to see what has happened over the last maybe two, three months. NVGS. So I'd still be a buyer of this one because we can see we've got a wave one, wave two, going into wave three. Now something like TTMI also had that potential. Now did a little inverted hammer right here. Basically what you would say is at the T-line area. Remember what our criteria is for a fry pan. As long as it stays above the T-line, you can stay with it. So if this opens positive tomorrow, you can definitely be a buyer. I closed some of the, uh, just a, a little bit of the spreads, uh, Maria, but not a whole lot. I've probably got 80% of my original. I closed probably about 20% of them on Friday. thinking that it was going to take a couple of days for it to do a J-hook pattern and get back in. So now what I have closed is probably something I'd buy right back. On Amazon, because we're still two weeks away from expiration, I've got spreads on. And within two weeks, it still makes your uh, spreads still very viable. So right now, I'd be looking at maybe a, a maybe a, a, a nine twenty and a nine thirty, depending on the uh, again. Part of that is based upon what what is the math, what's the uh, return. Okay, a few that we uh, went after RLGT. Still out of this fry pan bottom. Now, closed as a doji, which still makes this a viable uh, trade if it opens positive tomorrow. Uh, TTMI is right on the verge. It's still kind of in this fry pan bottom, but we saw what it did today, an inverted hammer type signal. Makes it very simple. It has to open positive and trade positive. If it opens lower, what's that done to our fry pan bottom trajectory? Kind of diminished it. You want to be closing out any position you might be long. Okay, what else did we have? Well, let me take a look at the other biggies. Apple, just kind of moving sideways. Nothing here to get real excited about. Uh, and with it closing back below the T-line today, Kind of tells you that the trajectory has kind of disappeared for a little bit. Would wait for uh, something strong to show up. Tesla. This one looks good. So in a pattern, as we can see, got wave one, wave two, going into wave three. And how do we get into wave three? There's our bullish flutter kicker. There's our gap up to the resistance. There's our gap up through the resistance. We're still heading higher with the potential of this type of move right here. So on TTMI, uh, yes, 
because as you can see, it's been waffling in here. I'm still buying the pattern. Or that if the fry pan bottom stays in, yes, the, the stochastics will bobble back up again. Uh, what was I looking at here? Okay. Good currencies. Something we didn't do in futures. Can't think of what it is. So, all right. So, ACLS. Same scenario. You've got the potential of a pattern, a J-hook pattern, if it opens positive and starts trading positive, you have the J-hook pattern, which would be confirming your your uh, you know, Netflix. Netflix, still not anything dynamic. Wouldn't be trading Netflix right now because there's nothing that shows there's any major trend. Just still sideways move. Where would I be buying? I'd be buying puts if it came back down probably through today's low. I'd be buying calls if it broke up through the, the 150 level. Uh, okay, so your strongest signal is the kicker signal, as we saw in con uh, last week. That ticker signal told us it was going to be more upside. So that's what makes Kiwi interesting. Yes, that is a kicker signal. Now, theoretically, it shouldn't have this tail to the downside. But the fact that they gapped it up above the previous day's open that went this way and took it this way told you there's a dramatic change of investor sentiment. So more than likely, you're still going to see a buy recommendation on this one at 20 or at 1750 as if it breaks out through there with a kicker signal putting us into this next wave that means we should be heading up another three four points uh sv just slow stochastics as they seem to work no other reason than that uh fred So how this kicker type signal kept you going. Now you have kind of a bullish uh, a doji sandwich up through the 50. I would think your next target is at least up here, which would coincide with this downtrending uh, channel. And so we also saw that in... In uh, GWRE, kicker signal, taking you to the upside. BlackBerry, even though it didn't do very much today, or it didn't do anything, came back testing the T-line. So we're watching to see if that's going to start uh, back up again. Just take a look at a few right now. Nugget, still telling us there's nothing dramatically great going on in the gold stocks. It's It probably now has to get up through the uh, 50 to have any credibility. And we can see what's happening here on Labu. Just nothing yet. It has, it's having a hard time getting up through the, uh, uh, the T line. Yes, there's a kicker signal here. So that one becomes a very attractive one, especially if it opens positive tomorrow. Your doji sandwich trying to get back up uh, smaller and to move that magnitude that's getting you pretty close to that resistance level okay let's see this one had some interest in it. There's that little scoop pattern, NAK. 
if you like the smaller price stocks, that's one you can uh, look at. Uh, ESTR, there's your J-hook pattern. So you can see all the dojis in here. Bounced off the 20 up through the T-line, you can be buying this one on positive trading. Oops, I'm writing some of these down. OESPR has an attractive looking uh, chart. Probably going to get you back up into the uh, trading range again. PLSC, there's your doji sandwich after a bullish engulfing signal. That one you can get ready to buy on positive trading tomorrow. You're in the oversold area with a buy signal and a continuation buy signal. If it opens positive tomorrow, very simple. You can be buying, and you just don't let it close back below the T-line. Uh, and no, not in this day and age. If Unless you're trading a very thinly traded stock, they're not going to come back and hit your, your stop. If this, for example, is trading... 840,000 shares each day and you're buying a thousand shares of it and it's moving up they're not going to move it back if you put your stop right here they're not going to go through 40,000 shares just to get you to your 1,000 shares now if there's only maybe a hundred and twenty thousand shares trading in this maybe they could move it around a little bit but uh, more than likely they're not if something moves to the point where they've come back and picked off your stop, that means it was heading in the direction that you didn't want it to be heading in for whatever reason. And the worst case scenario is if they came down and picked off your stop and then turned right around and took it back up, you can always buy it back. When you were putting on a spread, like you mentioned with Amazon a few minutes ago, how far out to expiration do you go? Do you try to keep it within a current month and ever go out two months or longer? Uh, no, Bob. The reason for that is, go back to Amazon. Let's say you bought a spread. Bah, bah. What's happening to my mouse here? Maybe it's... What happens if you put a spread on it six weeks before expiration? And I'm just going to pick out some. Let's say you bought the uh, 860s and you sold the 870s. And you still had six weeks to go. What happens when it's moving up? Well, usually the higher priced option is going to move faster because that's the closer to the at the money. So they're going to probably be paying up for that one and not so much for the in the money because that won't move as fast. So even though you're moving in the right direction, you might be losing on that uh, spread because of the higher price one that you sold is moving up faster than the uh, lower price one that you bought. So I usually keep uh, I usually keep my spreads usually around two, maybe three weeks ahead of expiration. I don't try to go out any further than that. Uh, with most states and relatives, they your stop does not show. Yeah, a lot of times when you're putting in a stop, it's electronically set up at your firm instead of out where the, the uh, market makers can see it. Um, and what that does is uh, when it hits your stop, then it automatically kicks a market order from your brokerage firm uh, instead of market makers being able to see what, what's happening. Okay, just a few more. Uri, uranium, there's your fry pan bottom. That one I'd be, uh, uh, be going after. 
it's a low price stock, but you could probably get to get a good percentage move. Um, after the close, the bid ask spread really wide. The last trade, 1725, and the bid is 1650, and they mass 30. Because somebody has put in a good till canceled. And so those good till canceled mean somebody might be buying at, let's pick out a stock that's got a bigger. All right, let's say this stock closed at 641. There might be a, a buy, a bidder here at at $6. Good till canceled. So everything else that was during the day, at the end of the day, disappeared. And let's say somebody was asking 725 good till canceled. Well, those two become, at the end of the day, the bid and ask uh, spread. But what will happen the next morning, as soon as we get close to opening, you'll see where the bid and ask get very close. Um, and that's, that's really why I tell people that after hours, doesn't really mean a whole heck of a lot uh, because you might be looking at, at stocks that trade 2.6 million shares during the day, and they might trade 4,000 shares after hours. So somebody that's buying 1,000 shares might knock the stock up a half of a buck after hours because there's so little volume. Uh, CYCC, again, is... A bullish engulfing signal right on the T line after the big spike up. Now you can see the profit taking is over. You can still buy this one on positive trading tomorrow. Whoops. Momo, there's your uh, bullish doji sandwich breaking out. I would still suspect this is going to be in a strong up, up move. Yeah, there's usually not a whole lot of uh, interest after hours. Yeah, the only time you're going to catch something that's really moving rapidly after hours is, let's say, at 4.05, they announce that they're in takeover talks with somebody. Yeah, the stock's going to start moving because everybody's jumping in, even though... Uh, there's little uh, uh, volume. They're buying whatever they can. <coughs> RP, that's setting up to get back up into the trend trajectory. You can see the uh, fry pan bottom. You can see the hammer type signals. Now you're back up with a bullish engulfing, back up above the T-line. You can be buying this one. SQM. Uh, gapped up. You can see your little uh, uh, morning star signal right here at the breakout level. So what do we want to see? Well, that's not even a morning star signal. That's your trend kicker signal. Notice they opened here and closed here. Let's make this bigger. They opened here and closed here and gapped it up. So they did a trend kicker signal breaking out through this level. That tells you there's usually a lot more upside. And EK was one of the uh, trucking stocks. Now, obviously, a lot of the uh, transports were moving strong today, but this one's got that fry pan bottom breakout. You can buy this one on positive trading tomorrow. PTCT, here's your slow curve. Breakout. You can buy this one. Your first target should be the 50. Your ultimate target should be filling the gap up here at the $13 range. We're essentially about a 25-30% upside. Boot. Morning star signal. Doji sandwich. This is your McMuffin. And it closed right on the 50. Makes it very easy. If this opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying... And very simply, you don't want to see it close back below the T-line. That's probably one that you'll see recommended just based upon the signal, the double bottom setup, and breaking out through a resistance level. CCJ, one of the mining stocks. 
think it's one of my new stocks. Also, fry pan bottom, doji sandwich breakout. That could have a lot more upside. An easy P W. There's your best friend signal. Right here, if they break through the 50, your next target is going to be the 200. Why? Because your best friend signal tells you there's going to be a lot more upside. Oh, uh, I don't think you'd call this a dumpling top. It's just kind of uh, yeah, just not very strong at all. So you have to see what it does from here. Boot back to T-line or not back below today's close. Uh, yeah, if it opened positive, started trading positive, I wouldn't want to see it close back below the 50. I would tell you you're still stuck below that resistance level. Now, some of the shorts that you want to hang on to, NLNK, ever since they gapped it down, you want to stay short. What was the other ones? Oh, NVIDIA. And they gap this one down. It's still probably heading for this level right here. Oh. And we had another one that was working. PGTX still on a downtrend. And somewhere there was one. The NKTR, yes, NKTR. Ever since we had this uh, bearish doji sandwich that closed below the T-line, there's your bearish doji sandwich again. Now you've gotten into this gap area. That makes this area the next likely target. Did I do that one? NKTR. Yeah, that one. Still looking for this, but stochastic still heading down. Still looks like you could get back into the uh, back to the 50. Okay, let's see. General question. All right, any more general questions? Do them now. I notice on some of the ambiguous patterns, you say something like kind of a fry pan bottom or a type of J hook. So if it looks like a particular pattern, we should go with it. It doesn't need to be a perfect pattern. Yes, it doesn't need to be a perfect pattern. Not all patterns are going to be picture perfect. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is kind of a fry pan bottom. But the important factor was when it broke out through here, it was kind of confirming that. Uh, the belt hold signal is something that if it doesn't start confirming right away, yeah, that wasn't so much a, that was a belt hold bullish engulfing. Had it opened, whoops, that's not even the right one. That's why it's, what's happening here? M D C O. Well, what is MDCO? It, you want to see it confirm, do all the other confirmations, which it didn't do until we got over here. Morning star signal, bullish uh, inverted hammer confirmation. So now you're starting to see buying. And this, even though it wasn't the initial signal, you can look at this whole pattern and say, all right, they had a, uh, uh, they had a uh, big belt hold. Now it's kicking into uh, 
into effect. Oops, how did I talk? I had less charts tonight and we're already at nine o'clock. Uh, Left-right combo, yes, a left-right combo, right smack dab off the 50. You can be buying. Obviously, you want to see what it does here at this level and this level. So you're at the breakout points, but you've got a lot of juice left in your stochastics. So if it breaks up through this level, look for a wave of that magnitude. Uh, hold on to your individual ones until I tell Jim to do the double line. Are there any more general questions on candlesticks? I know we're going to be doing a weekend session here pretty soon on going much more in depth with the T line and the three T line. Uh, if it doesn't, if a belt hole doesn't confirm right away. You just wait for the next buy signal. Then that belt hold becomes part of that uh, whole analysis. Okay, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 4.8 seconds, do the next double line. So we can stop the scrolling. Cool. You stay long on this one, but you just don't want to see it close below the T-line. Notice where the selling warning came from when they gapped it up in the overbought condition. So you can get ready to buy this one. If you've already bought it, you stay long right now as long as it stays above the T-line. CENX, there's your bullish engulfing bottoming action. You stay long on this one. As a safety factor, you keep your stop down here below the T-line, especially as you're climbing up toward the over that area. ANW, you stay long. But notice how you're starting to pick up a little bit of steam here. At this point, I'd probably have my stop somewhere right around in this range. I wouldn't want to see it come back down through there. Does your Momo trading Momo Super Dogs food? Oh, I don't know. Jason, was that at the baseball game? I had a jumbo dog. GNRT, just stay long as long as it stays above the T line. CRHM, another one you can stay long as long as it stays above the T line. SPWR, a uh, nice big bullish uh, breakout. You can buy this one on positive trading. If it's telling us the 50 after a strong signal is not going to resist, they could be taking this one up to the 200. We did, Fred. Fred, you can be buying this one on positive trading now that the that the 50 is not acting as resistance. With this being your first target, this downtrending channel. Uh, very simple on O R or A R O C. We've gotten up here to the overbought area. You did a doji just as you touched the uh, T line, and we know the simple rule of the doji. If they open it lower, you take your profits because probably they're going to do a bobble pattern. If it comes back up again, you got to make sure it goes through. If it doesn't, they're resisting at the 50. Oh. Something's happening. That 
bang the keyboard. G K O S G K O S. That's a kicker type signal to the downside. I'd be ready to go short. If I was short on weakness tomorrow, obviously you watch to see what it does at the first support level. The 50, if it breaks through that, I've got some running room down to the uh, the 200-day moving average. OMER, big, big breakout. You're in a 45 degree, as long as it doesn't come back below the T-line. ARNT, just stay long as long as you don't come back to the T-line. JD.com, stay long. Ha, huh? best friend type signal. You can buy this one. I'd probably be more apt to buy this if it got up through the uh, through the 50. Did we do Jern earlier? Jern gapped up. You can buy this one on positive trading. Use today's open as your stop. An FBR, you stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Looks like it's going to do a waffling uptrend. I-N-N-L, oh, that's a toughie. If it opened lower, I'd probably take my profits. What the anticipation is coming back to test the T-line. You can always buy back on the next buy signal. Yuri, get ready to buy this one on positive trading. You're probably paying bottom. Not going to be real exciting, but it'll be all right. And blue. Lou uh, still having a hard time confirming above the T-line. If I was going to be, I wouldn't be long. If I was going to be buying this one, I'd buy it above today's high, telling me they broke this downtrending channel after a morning star signal. Exxon Mobil. Not real exciting for a percent move, but you can see the big fry pan bottom setting up. Uh, if you're long, you can stay long on this one. And UNH, uh, nothing real exciting with that one yet. You can see how flat this one has been trading. Nothing, nothing there to show there's a extensive, or extensive uh, uh, bullish pressure on that one. SPPI, little scoop type pattern. You can buy this one on positive trading, but another one I'd rather pay for it if it starts trading up above today's high which was 645 I'd rather pay 650 for it knowing it broke out and doing the scoop pattern oh yeah more of a uh, kind of a little scoop uh, in here a e i s nothing to get excited about here you can see you're kind of stuck in a wedge formation uh boy I'd probably be someplace else. AAOI. Uh, if you're short, you stay short. The stochastic's still heading down. I wouldn't be a buyer of this one if I, I'd use today's high as my stop. If I was short, I wouldn't want to see it come up through there because that would tell me they are bouncing up off the T line. And I wouldn't be a buyer of this one until they can get it back up above. I'm sorry, bouncing off the 50 wouldn't be a buyer until they can get it back up through the T-line. Uh, Polaris, nothing here. You, If you were short, I would have covered it today. I wouldn't be a buyer, though. So probably at this point, unless they bring it back down through today's open, I wouldn't be a buyer until you see it close above the T-line. 
and ESNT. You can stay long on this one. Get ready to buy it on a breakout. AUPH just has not been able to get back up above the T-line yet. If I was going to buy this one, I'd have a buy stop just above the highs of the last couple of days. That would tell me that this little gap up is confirming and they are breaking it back up. See that? Just stay long as long as it stays up in this uh, uptrend. NVCR, stay long on this one. I would probably use today's low as a stop if I was long. As you can see that the profit taking is over, you're back to the uptrend. I'd be out of it if it came back down through the low, and I'd probably be a buyer if it came up through the high. Uh, HCAC is not coming up. Mags, I think, is a low volume stock. Right now, I would not be long or short this one. There's no trend to this one. EXAS. Oh, boy. If you're looking to go long, it needs to probably trade above today's high, setting up a doji sandwich. Yes. Uh, If you're starting to see buy signals here, this this now comes into play that they wiped out a lot of sellers. Notice where the uptrend started, right smack dab off the 50. So this just kind of adds to the credibility, even though it's not the instigator, it's just added confirmation. Okay. Uh, David, if I am buying something, I know that if this opens positive, more than likely I don't want to see it trade at all back below uh, the open. That tells me they're stuck. If I've got a big candle day, I'm trying to think of one. If it's I use a close below the halfway point of that candle, I'll see if I can find one. And if it's a big candle day, for example, if I was buying on positive trading tomorrow on first solar, started trading positive, I wouldn't want to see it close below the halfway point of this candle. Now, that would probably correspond with closing below the T-line. If I open positive and started trading down, I wouldn't want to see it trade below the open. That would tell me there's no strength there. Get right back out of that uh, position. IMMU, nothing here. If you're short, uh, get ready to cover the shorts. Um, you can see where it's kind of basing. So if I was short, I wouldn't want to see it uh, trade back up above today's high. Okay, did we get them all? I guess so. All right. If tomorrow's uh, trading is positive, I would be buying. Uh, if I see three, that would look good. Kiwi. If it comes up through 1750, boot. If it opens positive tomorrow, above the 50, then don't let it close back below the 50. And SPWR, if it opens above the 50, get ready for it to move back up to the uh, 200. Okay, with that, let's call it a night. We'll see everybody bright and early tomorrow in the chat room. We'll see you then.